So I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. You're a developer. Do you find it that when you develop stuff that you need the input of like a network person? Certainly, yes, Absolutely. without a doubt. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're working on right now uh, centered around machine learning and IoT. Uh, and there's a lot of networking that is required to actually get all of those pieces connected so that you can actually communicate with each other. So this is a fear a lot of network people have. I'm gonna get you into this conversation as well, Adrian, is network guys feel that developers like yourself are gonna take away the jobs of network people. Do you feel that, no, you're a developer, you're not really interested in OSPF, BGP, you'd rather work with a, with a network person? Yeah, so I would definitely rather work with a network person in that aspect, uh, because a lot of software engineers, uh, myself included, uh, I just expect the network to work. Uh, what happens underlying, right? Your problem. Yeah. You know, yes. as long as it gets done, you know, <laughs> it's your problem. Happy. <laughs> Let him take care of it. No, so I mean, from my perspective, right, and, I've been, it's, it's a nice story because I've been to Google Next last week and I've met one of my ex-colleagues and he's doing a lot of cloud and he's like, how do you see the network engineering job changing with the advent of cloud, right? Yeah. So that's another thing that's like, everybody's scared. Yeah. Oh, the cloud is going to take our jobs. So I don't think that at all, right? So your basic networking skills will always, always be valuable, in my opinion, yeah. right? Your routing and switching, your security will, will always be valuable. Now, what you add on top of it, that be it cloud, being ML, being you know software development, automation, that's just an addition to your skills and it's gonna make you that much more employable at yeah. the end of the day. And it's, I love this stuff, so I, I love learning about it. So I see a, a natural evolution to this, right? To network automation, programmability, uh, what you're able to do with the APIs, right? How can that improve your day-to-day -day work that we've been doing, right? creating VLANs and uh, trunks and all of that? How can that be improved and automated so that we have time for learning ML or you know AI or cloud or moving workloads all around the world. So yeah, there's there's not gonna be a shortage of jobs for network engineers anytime soon in my opinion, so. And you're a CCIE, yeah? Yes. But you've now moved more and more into dev or development like automation type stuff, is that right? It is, but I mean, at the same time, we were staying here with Patrick last night until like 7 p.m. figuring out, uh, work on a project that he needed my networking skills, right? So it's like, he brought his ML skills, I brought in my networking skills, and by the end of last night, we made it work, right? So that's, that's always nice. So yeah, I kind of see the, the more skills you acquire at the end of the day, the better, I think, yeah. right? So exactly. that's my perspective in this. And it's interesting, I mean, this dynamic, you know, network engineer and developer is, is a good example. So, I mean, you guys needed each other. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we're, we're both complementing each other, right? Yeah. So one person brings a set of skill and then learns from the other one, right? So at the same time, Patrick is learning networking and learning software development from him. So it's like, you know, it's a symbiotic. Uh, yeah, it's like a give and take, right? Yeah. So when Adrian has things that he needs help on specifically for programming, uh, you know, I give him a hand, help him out with it. Uh, I probably ask him more questions about networking than he does with me on software programming, but uh, it's, it's a lot of give and take and uh, it's very beneficial for both of us, I think. Yeah, definitely. So here's a nasty question. Is it easier for a network person to learn programming or is it easier for a programmer to learn networking? Or it, that's a, that's dodgy a question. question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, you know, like I'll give you my my perspective. Yeah. I've been like uh, in Cisco for this is my 21st year. Oh wow! Uh, so I've been like in the networking world. In fact, I've written so many CLIs. I don't remember how many CLIs I've written, and people have used it, right? So, but I've always been a software guy, yeah. right? So I'm dangerous to the point where I know networking. Uh, and I'm, I'm <laughs> dangerous, I love that. <laughs> and so dangerous in software. So I can actually just roll up my sleeves and start like doing whatever it takes, right? 
So I would think like if, if from from a networking perspective, like it it's easier to pick up a software skill. That's interesting. Uh, and like, but if you are just a software guy, and if you have to like pick up a CCNA book, it's very hard. So I would say that use it to your advantage, right? You know, yeah. like yeah, if you are a networking guy, like you actually should be very. Yeah. So I would I would, girl, I, right? would I would agree with you on that uh, because software a lot of software engineers right they have a specialty that they specialize in right it's a subdomain that they know a lot about. They know yeah. how to write software, but they write it specifically for the subdomain. If you're a network engineer, your subdomain could be networking, and then you just have to pick up the software stack and learn how to program. Yeah. And what do you guys recommend? I mean, I think I've asked this question many, many times. Which language? How would you, is it Python? What would you guys say? What should I start as a network person? I mean, as I'd, a UK, I'd go, yeah, I mean, for me, easiest was to pick up Python, actually, right? Yeah. And first of all is the language itself. It's very readable, I find it, compared to you know Go or other languages. Uh, it's very readable, and then there's a lot of content out there. Yeah. So there's so many libraries that have been developed throughout the years that help you establish this SSH connection or a NetConf agent. Or, so there's already a lot, a lot of content that's been developed by people. Yeah. So we, if you have a networking issue today, just look it up. For sure, somebody has already looked at it before and either developed a small script or there's a library out there helping you out to do this. So I think the community is great uh, and Python would be the easiest one. Then we have some Go, uh, actually introduction to Go, a couple of workshops that Patrick and the team has worked on. So Go, I also see it as up and coming because mostly also the tooling, it's a nice hard to find language and then there's the troubleshooting tools and the tooling that comes with Go is just amazing, right? So from that perspective, I found like, you know, Python and then maybe Go and then really depends on your use case and the problem you're trying to solve, right? In, in, a, lot of, in a lot of cases, but to get started, Python in my opinion would yeah, be- Yeah, I would highly recommend Python as well for somebody that's coming from a network background. Yeah. Uh, it would probably be the easiest one to get up and started with and actually building useful scripts right away. Yeah. And that, that would be a very good way for people to build their confidence because yeah. once you have good tools and like if you, like you know, it's very easy to write your first hello world, uh, but then like Python will like really help you in a way that, oh, now I can really make a call to like this API that I know and get that data. And that's the the confidence building journey uh, yeah. is much easier, I feel, with Python. That's yeah. brilliant, guys. Anything else you want to share? This is great. Yeah, I mean, for people asking, you know, how do I start? It's pretty much on the Cisco side, developer.cisco.com. And David, I believe you'll have some links in the bottom of this. I will, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, people can go there, have a look at it. There's don't be scared. Uh, I've been there. There's just a lot of content. We have a lot of learning labs, workshops, video courses. I mean, everything you need pretty much to get started. And then not only that, but to be proficient at this and get better and better every day. Guys, thanks so much. Really awesome. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. everybody. Thank you.